Well, good morning, everybody. Um, today we're starting the conference a little bit late, but better late than never. Um, this is going out live to um, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. But I'm having a little problem with YouTube right now, so that may not show up. So if you want to go see it, go to Twitch, um, the Twitch channel. So without further ado, uh, we're starting. Well, so today uh, we're going to inform, as usual, and to take this dialogue that's circular with the same purpose to inform all Mexican people regarding how the uh, Republican government is going, how the advance that we're taking in the purpose of transforming Mexico. We are going to have information from the doctor, Sandoval. She's the Secretary of Public Function uh, related to a special program to account to count with the support uh, with this, the support of the people uh, combating corruption. We're cleaning the government from uh, corruption from top to bottom, and we need the support of all our citizens, that they not uh, be left uh, alone with the obligation of uh, public servants, but also that everyone helps all the citizens, in order to end corruption in our country, to unearth corruption. And it's very important to have participation from citizens, from everyone. And it is not a simulation like it used to be, where they used to invent programs, only to cover uh, the files, only to fake that they were uh, combating corruption when in reality the corruption was com actually tolerated and permitted from above. So this is different and we do need the support from all the citizens because it is necessary that we shake out and uh, uh, sprinkle, <laughs> get a few of them with a little gentleness uh, to let them know. Yeah, shake some sense into some guys that it's not the same times of corruption in Mexico. We need to let them know. We need to let them know that this has changed. Wake them up. and start creating an ambient that is different, an atmosphere characterized by honesty and in the way of life and as, as a way of government. And so Master Ricardo is going to, uh, to inform us. He's the institute, from the Institute to return to the people's uh, stolen goods because there was a, a, a written document with a so solicitation for a, a forgiveness uh, that the house not be sold of the citizen, uh, Chinese Mexican, and to halt this process that you'll be informed of now, that this will not proceed, and that we will um, look at the house like we agreed yesterday without violating any laws. It is not an act that's arbitrary. 
you'll get all the information. So in order uh, to continue with the program and the plans, that is to say, even if it rains or if it uh, has lightning or has thunder, they will still continue to give the support for the the uh, sportsmen from the uh, Pan American Games in Peru. That the, yesterday they won another gold medal, and they're doing very good. And we're taking paying attention to the medals. And when they return, they will have their funding. It will not be halted. They will not prevent it. Yes, they're always promoting these uh, stays of um, and forgiveness. And so after tw uh, year 2007, they've been trying to take a procedure that's legal, and they wanted to present the uh, stay. But so the num more than the money. They've already divided that money to the Secretary of Health, to the procurement uh, at that time, and the judicial power. So the little bit that's left, the uh, so two hundred thousand million, uh, two thousand million dollars, and then they discovered that they had this house. So now they're asking for stays again. They're, they're very. That's very strange. All this matter. So now we're going to start uh, with Dr. Merina Sandoval, and she will inform you regarding this uh, uh, program to combat corruption. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for the media that is here for this announcement from the Secretary of the uh, Function, Salcedo and De La Paz. And we're announcing today, it's the calling of citizens uh, that are fighting corruption, of whistleblowers. That was a pending uh, debt for more than two decades. So as of two decades, the state of Mexico was trying to, uh, so there was different uh, areas that were supposed to, that the state Mexico have, have uh, stimulus to, uh, for, and we did not have these stimuluses for whistleblowing, but now we are doing it in this program that complies with three of these uh, major branches. So this is one of the central branches uh, to protect the rights of every type. Of course, the labor rights, so that's what used to happen when they ever said anything, they would lose their uh, jobs. So now they're going to protect the jobs. They'll have uh, uh, guarantees that if they uh, whistleblow, that they will not be uh, losing their jobs. And that's a new uh, platform that they're going to be doing to prevent people from getting fired for telling where there is a crime. So now, so now it's a very simple uh, to utilize this system. If you look at the picture there, it's uh, it talks about um, how they would uh, fight corruption. And we uh, were taking the protection. And we've met our convention. And we've assessed and started uh, um, the uh, embassies and all these good uh, Spain, all the embassies to from Latin American countries also, they've adopted the plans. And so we adopted about 12 days ago in the function uh, with the representative of UNO DC and a few other uh, assigned people from this convention. And it's a, a stimulus program for the uh, internal uh, whistleblowers. 
So these has a, these have a few things. They guarantee confidentiality. This is very important because we we will. Of course, you can't have an anonymity because um, you could just. But but what's most important is confidentiality. And there's a lots of responsibility when they are alerted and they are obligated to guarantee confidentiality. And accompanied also with uh, the citizen will be uh, having protection. And then also for activity that it's, that it not just be ignored, uh, that it need to be acted upon. And they can't just have like a bottle they threw into the sea and hope something will happen. So the acts that they can be alerted. So there's grave acts of uh, corruption that need to be alerted. And uh, like if they have a, a sexual assault or, you know, um, where they're uh, violating human rights. So in 12 days that we've been uh, presenting this program, we've had 172 alerts and and they are on the uh, web page all the information that you could see to, in these uh, systems that are completely at your disposition there is also a small video that we would like to share with the people and if you would permit me um, uh, we can uh, have the them to transmit it so there's the uh, video. Wow, this is cool. Uh, citizens uh, alerting regarding corruption. It's been initiated by the president, and it's also been liberated by the secretary of uh, public function. The new secretary of function account counts with the program that in that um, encourages uh, to inform regarding corruption. It's very different, and it's got the new ethics to be cautious of the stigmas and dangers of telling that need to be addressed. And we need to need to uh, let people know due to our uh, conscience, uh, civil conscience. One of the st uh, strategies that is most um, the best to corrupt about uh, corruption is to include uh, the uh, people. But so anyone who sees something, you can also, uh, you know, uh, be complicit if you don't tell. So these are strategic heroes that uh, have honesty and will combat corruption and alert the importance of this program it makes them give the uh, people the tools and adequate for the national reality where now we can identify to uh, systems to combat corruption with a new program with anonymity and confidentiality and will permit to safeguard to those people that are alert so it's open to uh, people's own honesty and their uh, human rights. And the alerts contribute to combat corruption and Im impunity in Mexico. If, if I was going to uh, tell, I would want to be uh, protected to make sure that I was, and I want also that they would not become lost in the bureau bureaucracy and they not actually work on the thing that we would actually want there to be some kind of judicial uh, situation that when they did that corrupt act. So the program also um, sends a law that stimulates uh, telling on uh, uh, corruption. And so that is the, the job of secretary. So you need, they need to so that's where you would uh, announce it. So I'm going to copy that so I can, uh, so we can uh, use it later. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry, but I had to do that. So very good. So this is what has to do with um, 
la the Secretary of Public Function and the support to reinforce and combat corruption. That the citizens uh, participate and let uh, people know. Uh, I also want to take advantage now that um, to inform regarding these cases in the presidency of the Republic. You see that we let you know this information that was lies regarding the consumption of some kind of sausage or chorizo. <laughs> it was like a big like scandal. And all this it's good to show to show the cover or of our adversaries these uh, newspaper people the media <laughs> writers these uh, people that supposedly integrates uh, the fine people of social status that without any evidence, without elements, data, they just throw it against us. Without arguments, phobias, uh, charges, ideological, conservatism, So let's let them know that we are not um, spending things like this. That on the contrary, there's a, dimi a considerable uh, diminishment for the budget for the president in, in general terms. I, last year they exercised around 3,000 million pesos. That's 1,000 million were in the presidency in administrative expenses and around 2,000 million was the, uh, like the rest of the staff in the government. So, around 3,000 million, and now we have spent this far, approximately exercised a, a, a little more than 300 million. As of now, that's one-tenth. We calculate that we'll be, we'll wind up around 700 to 800 million at the end of the term. And the most expense is, has to do with insurances that they have to continue to do to, to maintain the uh, institutions. But of course, that was reduced. The number of uh, public servants from the presidency. And the 8,000 elements from uh, the major state went, became part of the Secretary of Defense. So now to inform you this, that there is no, these consumptions are not happening. There used to be um, purchases of foods in the government, previous government, that they had these great halls in the presidency. And that's why that whole thing about the sausage and chorizo, but, but that's not us. That's not what we're doing. Don't confuse us with those. I wish that the all these 
these guys writing these articles and experts, members of this civil society, would uh, offer a um, uh, to to be uh, forgiven. Asking the senator or the militant from the opposition, it's more complicated. But when it comes to those that um, that appear to be independent and they supposedly act with responsibility and honesty, they should ask for forgiveness. That's what's most convenient in these cases, an act of honesty. To say I was, I made a mistake, I, I let let my passion uh, get to me, this anti-government or against the, or against the fourth transformation, whatever. Because, yes, they went a little far with it. Yesterday, I was uh, reviewing, and it's very important that the participants um, um, showed themselves that they took off their mask. It's like like where the the story where the uh, king is uh, running naked. It was like that. Uh, that about the uh, sausage or chorizo. Yes, it was what was uh, spent and what they acquired. And it stayed on the page like an assumption or a budget. But of course, that wasn't going to be exercised, and it demonstrates now that there is nothing bad that doesn't come for something good. It shows you how it used to be and how it is now. But imagine when, the, when this information comes out, You don't need bots. There it is. And they start slamming. This is the moment. Let's do it. We got him. We caught him. They're all the same. No. My uh, first cousin. We are not the same. <laughs> You'll be finding out. So you you know. But they're acting like... Some of them do it out of um, uh, vested interest because they lost their privileges. And others do it um, because of their mediocrity because of their conservatism and others because of both things because of in interest and because they're also conservative so now all we got to do is clarify it yeah put it up show what they're saying <laughs> so there's the news oh, or there's the writing so let's amplify it but in any case we're going to let you see it. Let's 
And I also want to let you know that the expense of the major state was considered a national security expense. And it was only informed the total amount, not they, they wouldn't let you know um, specifically what it was spent on. That was uh, in, uh, it made like uh, disclosed. So here it says the major expense is reflected in the period from July exercised. Okay. It is also an opportunity to revindicate or indicate the politics of austerity. If you save and you finish the superfluous expenses, there's no need to increase taxes or to decree increase in gas. The gas will, I'm sorry, the uh, budget will be enough, is enough. And this is an austerity that's different from the, that used to be applied in the neoliberal period where they basically was affect the uh, workers. This one has to do with the luxuries of the government and the wasting, it, um, frivolous spending. Yeah. Wow. So there you could see what the money was spent on specifically. So you can, we'll keep you informed of what we spend the money on. And this is an opportunity to show you. So we'll end with this. And now we're going to go to, to this matter of the sale of the house, of the residence. To let you know that we're still going forth with the auction and to invite everyone to participate. Those that have possibility of buying this home and at the same time that they want to help us. The home is valued at a hundred, approximately 100 million pesos, but actually the purpose is to uh, to propose a larger uh, amount. In all the previous auctions, there's a price that's starting, and then it increases. Usually, in or uh, in the auctions that we've re uh, done. There has been um, about a 30% increase from whatever the value uh, or the uh, like the profile or of the value. So we think that we would sell it around 150 in order to uh, give the grants to the 544 sportsmen that are at the games in Peru. And with that, we will be able to give them, in general, around 240,000 each on their return. And to those that are getting medals, besides that, 60,000 pesos a month, additionally for a whole year, for those that get gold. Forty thousand, yeah, the gold. Thirty-five for the uh, uh, silver, 
and 30 or yeah 40 35 and yeah 40 and 25 yes for the bronze is 25 25 for the bronze that's how it is and that gives us around 150 and we want to give it to them directly and we're also looking at a form of um, uh, additional recourses um, and we're also going to have additional resources for the trainers because it's also very important so they can have their stimulus so we're going to ask Ricardo to give us uh, details regarding this matter Thank you, Mr. President. With your permission, hello, everybody. So we're going to let you know what is the phase where the uh, writings are for the solicitation for um, pardon. Um, oh, my gosh. On the 1st of, of August, we talked to the attorneys, I'm sorry, I had an attorney, because the confiscation that you've solicited is not from Mexico. We want to clarify that point. So as of yesterday, the 6th of August, the attorneys uh, gave us a writing where they're saying they're ratifying, they're trying to, the signatures and of the, but any in any case, we want to say they've omitted, they've taken just partials, the way they've written these uh, requests for, um, uh, forgiveness. So they they say that they were their wife was notified uh, on the 23rd of March 2007. On the 20th of April, they notified the uh, rega uh, regarding the um, and after 90 days he had he they didn't exercise their right so they they lost the right. So, posteriorly, they decreed. Uh, so, at that time, the PGR. Uh, so, in 2007, they abandoned the property. Uh, as of uh, 2007, it was given to them. So, what can conclusions can we give to, to do uh, return to the people that which was stolen is the state of right? And it's uh, derived a series of conclusions. And it was not uh, from a state of conclusion. And it's, they solicited. It's just a writing, and we've looked at it. With the the uh, attorneys are trying to uh, use a strategy to prevent the uh, sale of the property. And so the uh, paperwork doesn't actually have, they don't even inform the authority regarding the date of when they actually did not, um, that it was abandoned since 2007 in favor of the federal government. And another point is that there were other goods that were already sold without 
um, without even any complaint. But now all of a sudden there's complaint around 180 million pesos and also the abandonment of the property. There was 206 million. And, and at the end of the destination was in three parts, judicial power and the PGR and the Secretary of Health. But in that tenor, in that context, yes, they clarified that one third went to the judicial power. Around about 65 million went to the judicial power, 12 more than what is implied by the uh, sale of the house. And never did they give a request for um, a, um, you know, request for stay of, of uh, the property. So his attorneys are assessing and did not solicit within where on the money, which was other things, which were way more than the house. So the Institute for the People um, that are protecting the money of the, uh, are returning to the money of the people. And so, and as the president says, we're going to transform this property into resources that are going to go to the sports uh, teams in the uh, Pan American Games. So in uh, judicial terms, the matter is completely uh, uh, legal for us to sail it and we're going forth with it. And we're going to have more than a legitimate case and to distract and what's important is the results that the Institute of Returning uh, to the People that which is stolen. So the president uh, with highest margination and they will support the sports people for their uh, preparation for their Olympic Games. Nothing's going to uh, deter us and we're going to make a call out to those that are interested and we've already gotten some um, but, um, values, and, and we do have a few bidders that are, have told us that they are interested, very interested in this property, and we're going to take it forth because we have judicial um, rights, and we always work uh, with the state of uh, correctness and uh, with the law. So you, we're making a call out that you accompany us on Sunday at, at noon. Thank you very much. So now we're going to conclude this matter to say we're going to act legally, nothing by force, all with reason and with right. We are not going to utilize any mechanism of intimidation, use of force or pre uh, using power and impunity. It will always be a matter of caution and with um, sticking to law and legality. But we're also going to be ventilating things. All these things before used to be hidden. It, they just used to keep it within judgments and they didn't ventilate it and let people know. The people didn't know what was happening. Imagine how it goes. How are you going to ask uh, someone to proceed with a uh, uh, stay on this if they've already they've already turned over the major part of the goods that were captivated? If the person in charge of the uh, numbers as the technicians and the attorneys say to the money uh, numbers. Oh, I don't know what BUU is, but anyway. 
Has yeah. already been divided. Well, so the money, the biggest chunk of the money was already divided from the Secretary of Health apart from the $200 million. Another part was the uh, 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 Justice Department, and the third part, which is equivalent to about $70 million, to the judicial power. So now that's what they're going to use to resolve the uh, <laughs> stay or protections. So how is this? This is very interesting. It's a good uh, topic. Two six-year terms have passed, and now there was nothing, at, there was any uh, supposed judicial situation or certainty of judicial matters. But this is a good uh, topic. But it, but depending on how this matter ends, two things. The support for the sports people is going to be made a reality as they return next week. They will have their funds, 544 uh, of these uh, sports people. The second thing is to invite participation for those that would like to acquire the home to help us, including, as Mr. Ricardo used to say, that they go, that they be there personally. It can be it can be done by phone actually. It could be a mechanism like from a company, like they can do it offer by the phone at the auction. They will inform and they will uh, clarify and arrange it, and also to tell you for possible buyers, that we are, uh, that we will guarantee, that the government guarantees, because it's established by the law, distinction of dominion. If there's a judgment, that implies to return a good, a, uh, the government or the institute to return to the people that which is stolen will then give the resources that is guaranteed. That's just to let you know, according to the law. So you are safe. There is no problem. I feel that this they're doing, as, as uh, it was explained here, in order to uh, stumble us, our work. They, You know how many protections they've asked for, how many stays, in order not to construct the airport of Santa Lucia? 80 requests for stay and protection in excessive uh, amount. These that have nothing to do with it, only to halt, to stop us. That's the same way with this. Like yesterday, all of a sudden, this they surge with this uh, request for protection or stay. Why did, haven't they done it in the 12, last 12 years? All of a sudden now? Well, but as I am repeating, we are going to respect all legal procedures. Let's go. 
24 hours. Um, she wants to uh, ask, explain the debt that's on the property that was abandoned since 2007. So how much? Uh, so who's going to cover the expenses that were left abandoned? The transferences, how that works. It's about a million and a half, which will be taken out of the sale. That's They'll pay it and they'll discount it. It's a small amount from what where it is in relation to the... So does that include everything? Yes, it's all, all the expenses. A few days ago, you commented that the Chinese Mexicans belong to a politician. They've uh, profiled and they say it looked like it was um, that the politician, certain politician owned it. Herman, somebody? And if you'll permit me to ask another question. Well, no, I don't want to get involved in these or talk about this. I ask you not to, to, I want you to understand, but they, if you already did your investigation, then it's very relatively easy to find out the, the, in, and I don't want to get involved in that. Besides, I said it was, uh, I said it was from a politician and before. It used to belong to a politician that he sold it for this. But that doesn't mean any illicit uh, thing. And even uh, just that it used to be a politician. It does have to do with, with the matter, the way that po politicians used to live. That's what it has to do with. Because you've got to uh, make that public. Because they used to come from the bottom. And they had all these uh, worries. And first thing they did was buy themselves a mansion, apartments in foreign countries. But if they didn't buy it, they would rent a mansion. But it had to be in the, in the very, it had to be in Santa Fe, Pedregal, the mountains. <laughs> if they lived in, uh, in uh, Roma, in Tlalpan or in Benito Juarez or Salapa and they scaled and they would get go into the residential areas and if they came from the states that they studied in public schools they came from the bottom and from uh, San Luis, Hidalgo, Chiapas, they would go to the Lomas, like as soon as they had a job and they had uh, been charged with the position. That's the characteristic. Inclusively, it's important to uh, let you know that the novel of Fuentes in the most region uh, transparent that in the after the revolution two politicians many of them became bankers and they made businesses here 
in the city of Mexico with the speculation of the lands that they that they took uh, charge of. Speaking of of Los Lomas, it's interesting the story of how they founded uh, Las Lomas. How they made these uh, neighborhoods that have to do with politics, the support of the government to make these big uh, areas. And so they lived in there, and that's where they went to live. The uh, principal novel uh, was of this novel was a guy named uh, Robles that was a bank uh, revolutionary that became a banker. He used to come from one state from the north, and he had been in the revolution, and he went to the capital or came to the capital, and there here he entered into the aristocracy that he was never accepted sincerely. They always saw him as something less rustic. But that's the story, how they uh, made this city, the colonies, the, the, the neighborhoods, even Asakoko, where they lived, the previous functionaries. I'm referring to the ones that, that were in the whole period of the liberal uh, politics. It's in interesting, this investigation. How was it, the style of life in the politics in the times of neoliberalism? It's very interesting, the investigation, or this uh, topic of investigation. So there was, there was something they want to know about some law being modified in San Lázaro to run his type of law. No, it will not be modified. A according to um, yesterday, the law, um, I will uh, give you my uh, writings that uh, you were informed um, in the patio uh, here I will invite uh, representatives of the sectors and then uh, we will give it to them formally the document the information with the annexes and they will assist uh, the uh, delivery of the information, the Secretary of Government, uh, the, li the attorney, license person, Olga Cordero. The last few years, Felipe Calderón want to know what is your opinion. The secretary of uh, Felipe Calderón has, has been accusing of nepotism. Do you want to? Uh, no, she says no. It has no no merit. They've been accusing her of nepotism. So the president, uh, he has two questions. Here's my job. Where, where here's the seven uh, uh, that there's uh, uh, the ages of people in power right now. So there's seventies and eighties. Vladimir Putin, Russia, is sixty-five years old. Donald Trump that was born in in 46 
is 71 years old. Xing Jipi was born in 53. He's 64. Ramna Kobi was born the October of 45. He's 72 and he's the president of India. Shisho Abe was born in uh, 54. He's 63. The first minister of Japan, Angela Merkel, was born in 54. She's 63. She's the concierge of, Al of, of Germany. Theresa May was born in 56, and she's 61. And you, the president of Mexico, uh, 79th president, was born in in 53, and you're about yeah. Sixty-five. So, President, my first question is, and yesterday I wanted to ask, that if in the table of security, have you already gotten that there was 30,024 uh, arms, according to the defense, uh, they were legal arms that were uh, brought. So the Institute of Studies, International Studies and Development uh, that's in uh, Switzerland, they say that in our country there's 16.8 million legal arms and illegal arms in the hands of the people in the whole country. We are president after the U.S., one of the most armed after the U.S. What actions do you plan to execute immediately, your government, to take away arms from the people? So we're going to ask the Secretary of Defense to inform us, well, regarding these data. So I offer that next week the Secretary of Defense inform regarding all that has to do with arms. It will be very interesting that you will get to know the regulations that exist and the paper from the Secretary of Defense and the, and the licenses for uh, carrying arms and the type of arms and what is bought by the uh, Secretary of Defense in arms and, and what comes into the uh, con country and contraband in arms. How much do they estimate that is out of control? That is to say, arms that are in hands of delinquents and that and what is being done and what's going to be realized in the future that they let us know all the data and all the information yes it's a good matter thank you my second question AZTM the neoliberal of the ex-president Salinas of Gortari by, by the sub uh, uh, he's using the commander certain commander they are opposing the the, the making of the train Maya so they're they're waiting for the environmental impact study what is going to happen in the state of Chiapas where this train is going to pass with this position of ACTLN and if you would allow me to play the audio. We're going to confront, we're not going to permit that they come through here. This project of destruction, we are not scared of him, his national mafia, that he changed the name to 
It's the same people. We know it. We are going to defend what we've constructed. And we're asking the people of Mexico and the world that we are correct and they are not. We're not going to permit that they come to destroy our areas. Okay, so this is being pr uh, promoted by Calderon, the ex-president. No, we're going to act always with lots of prudence. And we're going to convince. We're not going to impose anything. And we don't see the Zapatistas uh, even as adversaries, much less as enemies. We think that, that they don't have the information complete or complete set of data to start with. The, the, the uh, area that, that or the rails that are going through Chapas is around about 100 kilometers from a, out of 1,000, uh, 1,300 kilometers of the train or rail, only 100 at most. has to do with the territory of Chiapas. That is uh, Boca del Cerro and Palenque. Maybe they just don't know Mexico in that area. But there's another thing. Those 100 kilometers already have are being utilized because as of the 1950s of the last uh, century they constructed a railway in the southwest the railway has already been there since then that is to say that 70 years ago so so it's not anything not to knock down any trees or it's not destroying anything. It already exists. It already passes through there. A train a, that carries loads. And before it used to be the passenger train, before they privatized it, these uh, railways. They had the, the railway train from the city of Mexico for passengers that went all the way to Yucatan and to Merida, even to Valladolid. And the railway from the southeast was in, in, uh, inaugurated in the 1950s from a uh, uh, President Aleman inaugurated it in the 50s, from 46 to 52, from this president. Uh, that's his term. So it's just a lack of information. But anyway, we will act in a very respectful way, in a, a respectful form. And we will not fall into any provocation. Thank you very much, Mr. President. That's ridiculous. It's already there. They don't even know it. But there was also a, uh, they, they took some money uh, from, uh, they assaulted some people, uh, did a robbery, and they took um, lots of money, of about 50 million uh, pesos. And it was a private company. They have identified the people. It appears to be that it was, they took uh, pictures, and the investigation is open. 
and it began the government of the city, the investigation. And I understand that they're going to bring the case to the uh, attorney general. But yes, it's already been investigated. So regarding the uh, House of um, Money, it's about, we have this um, assault in Reforma. There's participation, ex-federal police that are that are distracting, so that, so that they can start, you know, shootings in the restaurants and in the assaults in Mexico. Specialized. What do you feel on this? Regarding this matter, I do have information that's ample, sufficient. But because there's an investigation underway, we cannot consider it prudent to say anything regarding this. Yes, there is an investigation that's open. And and there, there are evid uh, evidentiary support of what's happened. And so let's wait for the results. But do you know if there's um, uh, who's involved? I can't say anything. All right. Can you tell us the details about the meeting with Goldman Sachs Goldman? And uh, uh, regarding the economy, yeah, I met with him in a very good conversation in very good terms. They have lots of confidence in Mexico, and they went with the Hacienda and uh, met agreements, economic and financial. And it was very agreeable, this discussion with this representative from the financial uh, company, uh, an international uh, company. Yes, um, look, there's not only confidence in Mexico. Here I can say this, and it's not to boast. But the information that I have is that now Mexico is the principal um, associate commercial of the U.S. And I can also say that it's grown a lot, uh, foreign commerce. And then that's not just confidence. It's uh, independent of any other circumstances, of other circumstances that are presenting themselves. We are having companies from the investment of uh, foreign companies, and our uh, free commerce is growing. So, so relations are very good. Every time we. Uh, some people from the government get involved uh, er, in, uh, re related to the demand. It's superior to the quantity that is uh, gained four or five times more. So, so we don't have any problem, financial, economic. There's confidence. Something about the confidence of business people. Well, it depends on the data they use. When there's an intention to project that things are bad in economics, they use certain data. 
Let's wait for the information that we're going to present on sep in September regarding how economy is going. We did it about two months ago, and we talked about this like an act. They said that we were going to fall into a recession. They were sure of it. And in the Socalo, which I always say Socalo is a mistake, <laughs> I said <coughs> that there was not going to be a recession. <coughs> Two months. And they kept saying, yes, there's going to be a recession. And there was no recession. So therefore, we're doing very well in our economy. One element of, of proof that, that our economy is doing well is that now that we have this existing confrontation with commerce due to tariffs that could have been converted into, and there was problems that we, and we, there was moments we thought it was going to be a big problem between the U.S. and China. Our, our peso sustained it. it a resisted loss. You know what the experts used to say about four days ago? That the peso was going to go above 20 in relation to the dollar. I can prove it. Like the attorney said, I'm not going to read the article to you, but but every time, but but titles they kept saying, oh, headlines, that it's going to go above 20. But no, it did not happen, fortunately. Yes, I know, a little bit. It went up, but it did not go above 20. And it's holding strong, resisting. Of course, it affected us because we were in first place when in relation to the strength of the peso of the currency. But now um, with this crisis, it, it benefited the Japanese yen. And it took us out of first place, but now we're in second place of all the uh, currency of the world in relation to the dollar. So therefore, we're doing good. I am still optimistic. What do they want? Well, these adversaries, or our adversaries, they want it to go bad for us. But they're going to continue to want. It's going to go very well. And I expect that it be approved, this treaty of free commerce. And that will give us more stability. It will anchor us more, our economy, in order to resist uncertainties, problems of, of foreign areas after it gets uh, approved, this treaty. So do you share the position uh, for the, uh, that there's kind of something about digital um, taxes to compensate after they reduce the um, load on Pemex? What is your opinion regarding that? Yes, we have a commitment, and our commitments are complied with. We will not increase taxes, not even create new taxes. No. 
We don't say one thing and do another. We are different. So we said the taxes weren't going to go up. We are not going to increase the debt. There's not going to be increase in gases. And we're complying. And besides that, precisely because the economy is doing well, we don't even need any measures, extraordinary measures. Why is the economy doing well? Why are financial uh, public surface uh, doing good? Because they didn't take into account these neoliberal, these two variables that technocrats did not take into consideration speaking their language. One, corruption. No, they did not combat corruption. They encouraged it. That's why the economy was bad. Because you could try, treat um, or use any, the best economic mo model, the most perfect one. But if you have corruption that was uh, reigning in Mexico, any model would be a failure. So no, there is no corruption. And I keep explaining how we're doing so that that's what this meeting is for, to, to reinforce and combat corruption. This they were not taking into, into account. And the second thing that they were not taking into account was austerity. They acted like, like they had some kind of uh, worries that they were little pharaohs. They spent so much. It was even embarrassing. They looked ridiculous. I remember that one time they did a ceremony in Acevedo because a country had interest in selling helicopters to Mexico. And they prepared for the Mexican function a uh, military parade there in Europe. And there they go. And they do homage. And in the end, they bought the helicopters. Isn't that embarrassing? So that's, that's why the budget wasn't enough. If you do those kind of things, it's not enough. With those wasteful ways and so that's why we have a healthy public uh, budget this is not a secret but they didn't teach them this in those schools of economy where they studied not in mexico and not in the foreign countries there is no treat treatment or treaties regarding this uh, matter. The, the damages that are caused by corruption and wastefulness to the how it affects economic growth in the nations. And that is why what we're going to be writing something regarding this matter. It's very important. to present it as an option, as an alternative. Very good. So another, hello, Mr. President, regarding this money of the Chinese men that they told you was transferred to resources to three places, I have documents 
from the government, from Felipe Calderón, that indicates that they simulated this transference of resources to construct the national centers of new life. But not only that, those resources of the Chinese, but also other thousands of millions of pesos, millions of dollars, Colombian and Euro, that were supposed to be transferred to the detention for drugs and construction of the new centers of new life. And they were never constructed, these central, they simulated it. And I would like to give you uh, the director of the institution to return to the people that which is stolen to be able to publish it. This is what I would like to say to your opinion. If you have these data of these transferences that were simulated, not just of the Chinese man, but also uh, data regarding uh, another uh, properties from Ricardo Borsell, and if Rossi Orozco had already returned the, the home that was from Carrillo Leyva, that is also in the Loma of Chapultec, so it can also enter into the uh, auction. So let, let Ricardo inform us in general, and then of course he has to talk with you in personal uh, ways, because this is a matter that merits lots of time and an exchange of information. So let's see what you can say regarding that. With regards to that, effectively, we accounted with uh, 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 homes in the areas you're saying. The two um, real estate from the department and the home are already being administered. First, the apartment. There was, they asked us for a certain amount of time, but, and the home, and they've already given us both those. Regarding uh, the, uh, we, we need to ask uh, to, we do have some daddy, uh, data regarding, we can't sell it yet because they haven't uh, declared the abandonment regarding the home, but we're working, commenting that it's urgent because the administration and the, uh, they spent a lot. I, I didn't do it, but the um, previous person, they've spent a large, um, they're spending a lot on maintenance, I think, and, and it was a very high number. So the administration of these um, embarkations so I don't have the total data, but I can consult with you. And finally, regarding the first point, of course, we'll exchange the documents and with, we'll exchange ideas and look at your documents. And regarding this uh, auction, since you're already, uh, you know, protecting the, uh, that if they can have some of the money destined to the, that were assassinated in 2000, if there's any money left over. So some of the money could be, they're very uh, lamentable uh, sums that they're living on. Yes, always. We will destine the money to causes that are just, always. First of all, to the, humble people and the poor people of the municipalities that are most abandoned in Mexico. We will continue to give the money and support. But for in order to so they can construct the roads because they are they have uh, problems with a bad situation with the roads and other necessities in their area. And also, in order to do justice to the victims of violence, and in this case, to do justice for the sports people, that is uh, actually a recognition for those that with, with so much sacrifice have gone forward and with very little support from the government. 
that is now to start to put things uh, in order regarding the debt that we have with the sports people. It will always be this way for causes that are just. And to say that there is a lot of goods that there is that are public dominion that we can have another auction every 15 days or every two weeks of goods and homes and ranches, boats, air, airplanes, dollars, <laughs> lots of things. Mm. So there's everything's going to be given up and auctioned. And it's very important what Ricardo said here. Before they recover the goods and they would be there many years, like say this home. This is an example. This happened in 2007. It's been 12 years. And these are a real estate goods that are deteriorating. And you have to spend money on maintenance in the conservation. So now with the new law and with the Institute, we'll be able to in 15 days uh, put another auction up and deliver that funds to the people. What is needed, whatever they get in 15 days, that's that's how we do it now. That's a very brief, uh, rapid moment. So then the people, the, the relatives of um, newspaper people that have been you know, killed. And the next question, yesterday you received a letter in, from, from a lot of organizations where they are documenting and testimony that that federal and are doing arbitrary detention and and they're they're putting uh, the youth to let Alfonso Durazo to let him know to stop doing this uh, against consumers uh, for uh, consumers of marijuana. I don't have this information. And, and I'm informed of everything. So, not regarding the letter. I'm talking about, about they have not, uh, there is no program operation. There is no raids. This doesn't exist anymore. So that's why I'm going to investigate it. But I am sure that the Secretary of Public Security has nothing to do with these things. And there is no plan. Thank you, Mr. President. And to let you know that next Tuesday, they, we will meet in Guaymas, in Sonora, the Secretary of Security of National Defense and Marines with the governor of Sonora, Claudia Pavlovich, and with the uh, mayors in Hermosillo to encourage a um, security defense situation. This is because a companion of yours uh, two days ago uh, notified me of the security uh, situation in Sonora. And we said we would give them an, a set of information on that, that uh, Alfonso Durazo would inform. But we decided 
that it be taken at that uh, reunion in Sonora and to tell them that I will be there on the 2nd of September in Hermosillo. And we'll take that matter, a uh, security meeting there. So this Tuesday, and then again on the 2nd of September in Hermosillo. And we'll have the security meeting. And also, after that meeting, I'm going to comply with the agreement of meeting with the parents of the children that lost their lives in the ABC nursery. And we already came to this agreement. So something about the tenancy, so they're going to increase the, the amount that they're going to spend, that they're going to be spending 5,000 million pesos. And what do you think the Congress hasn't made it concrete changes and reform in order to diminish the cost of the uh, politician spending? I'm making a call out to the directors of politics um, or politicians that they need to behave in a consequential manner. They cannot be getting so much money, these political parties. They have to reduce their expenses and they have to return the money to public hacienda, a percentage of these prerogatives. I'm making a call out respectfully. It's not an order. It's not by force. It's a, a request that you behave in a consequential manner. We are not in the times of wasting superfluous expenses. You cannot have a government and parties that are rich with the people that are poor. I would expect that today they start to manifest themselves in relation to that. The directors of all the parties. And I want to hear that they be the first, the parties the progressives. And today I want to hear it. The position of the directors of the parties. At the very least, they need to reduce their expenses. It's a suggestion. Don't misinterpret. At the very least, by 50% to half. We consider to have moral authority to make this call. And we have just shown how much we reduced in the expenses in the presidency of the republic. 
So we're talking about about 75% reduction in the expenses of the Presidency of the Republic. I'm very glad that you asked this question because it's opportune to make this call out a request. So this matter, we're going to be dealing with it daily because if we don't, They act like uh, like they're not aware that times have changed. So we have to keep reminding them and that all of us need to help, all of us, to prevent corruption so that there not be abuses. Because this is corruption. When you uh, when you want to receive so much money, it's like a salary. It could be that it could be legal compensation, seven hundred thousand a month, but that it's immoral. How can you have um, salaries that are so elevated when there's so much poverty and so much need, necessity? So I expect that as of today, and if you don't listen that, that they say anything, then we'll keep reminding them. Don't accuse us of authoritarianism or of uh, believing you're uh, in power or imposing things, it is simply to make use of our liberty to express and manifest our thoughts. Regarding this preoccupation that the ex-secretaries have held regarding the Seguro uh, uh, Popular, popular so, so social security or something. Yes, that was a uh, plan that um, that we're taking forth. What used to be the popular security is now going to be the Institute of Health for well-being. We are going to guarantee medical attention and free medications to all the population, not just the four basic things, but all medications. And we are going to strengthen the system of public health with the utilization of that fund in order to not have a, a shortage of medications, uh, doctors, to improve the uh, um, health units that have been abandoned and to regulate the workers, of, uh, health workers that are now working, many of them, on a contract basis, like just um, temporary, and we're going to put them in uh, in the six years. Uh, we're going to give them a full-time job. It's a new plan because they left us a mess. They was thrown about in this health system. They devoted themselves to stealing in the health sector like they did in in the whole government. They even stole the money from the medicines. And that's why I find it strange that there's people that it's because of lack of information, because there's those that they don't do it out of bad will. 
they defend the popular security. But if it was the worst inefficient that has uh, existed, it used to be better before before they established this uh, security, uh, popular security. It is neither security, neither is it popular. They used to transfer the funds from the federal government to the states. And they misused the money, the funds. And that is why they spent so much in the spending of uh, medications, and there was not enough medication. Last year, they spent 90,000 million pesos and in uh, materials, medical uh, supplies. Three companies used to sell the major part of those medications. And the health centers, the medical units, the hospitals were abandoned, even more so due also to the neoliberal politics because they wanted to privatize um, education and that only the one that had money could could afford to go to school. When, and they would close the doors to the people that wanted to go into study for medicine and the faculties of uh, now, as it appears, we have less doctors than we need, including in uh, social security. They have vacancies of doctors for specialists but they don't even, we can't even get them. We're going to have a plan, a special plan. At, we're going to request from doctors that include. We're also thinking about asking people that have retired and doctors and nurses so that they can help us, not just to, because, because they're going to be permit to continue to have their, uh, their money in addition to what they're getting, not just because of that, but making a call so that they can help us to recover the system of public health. And there is people which has retired that wants to contribute. They want to help. They want to participate in the fourth transformation. And in this case, to raise up from the floor the system of public health. Look how it is in the case of Social Security. And this is official. It's a norm. Uh, let's say a medical unit that was that is in an outskirts uh, area, it has a possibility of counting on optimal conditions with 120 uh, medications. And a hospital, a rural hospital, 300 uh, types of medication and in optimal conditions. And a hospital from this regimen ordinary, about 600 medications. And a hospital that has specialties in the city of Mexico, 1,000, 1,200 medications. So how? How medicine 
First quality, second quality, third quality? So all of this is being attended to. There's four actions. First, that we not be short of medication. That we end corruption in the purchase of medication and that we distribute the medication. Like even Coca-Cola, it can distribute their, med their drinks all the way to the for this region, how do they even get their little potato chips? Why not? Can't we have the system of distribution to deliver medications, even the most uh, remote areas? So we are going to make sure that there is no uh, necessity or uh, lack of medications. But if there is no medications, they will die, the patients. And there is a shortage, not, not only in the medication areas, but in the hospitals. So we need to resolve this. Number two, the doctors. We're going to put a, a request out uh, to uh, take care of the proportion. And there will, in no other, um, there, there is not any, any uh, profession is more important. All the workers are important. But remember what we did when we needed for the operators, for the pipes. And we resolved it. We contracted about 1,300 operators. And more came. And we did a selection, something like um, a, a proportion. That we're going to do the same thing with medication, uh, with uh, medical workers and specialists. And here, we're going to put the basis here, the condition, and how much how much they're going to get. And we're going to initiate the process of recruitment of um, uh, medical professionals, uh, nurses. And that's the second part. The third part is to fix, repair the hospitals, the medical units. There's hospitals that are oversaturated, and ISTE is in a situation that's lamentable. The security, above all, like Social Security, it's like their hospital uh, system. All the hospitals in the health centers where they attend to open public, they're doing very bad, especially where the poor are. And last of all, the regulation of senators. Little by little, we're going to be going to make it a base. That is my commitment. So for this program, that I don't want, they want to know just part of it. People that, you think that people that are informed, or expect them to be informed, well, well, people that are conservative, uh, but intelligent. I respect, because it's serious. Without having all the information, he came out and gave his opinion regarding this matter. Well, in order to better this, this system of health, we are contemplating that we will increase the budget for next year 
in 40,000 million pesos. It's the budget, actual budget, more, more inflation. And I have an additional budget, uh, 40 million additional. From where is that money going to come from? These resources? The, that that uh, budget that you uh, that has about 70 million uh, so we're going to utilize 40 out of that 40,000 million that's all the information so that you'll know all will be attended to they will continue to be attended to they will not have a problem it's a fund the popular security of this year it meant or it means not all of it has been exercised was 75,000 million pesos. We're talking about attending around 50 million of people. So the funds, this fund, is like 70,000 million. So no one will be left without being attended. On the contrary, we will better the services. This is very important, this information. And soon we're going to present the program because including now the Institute of Health and Wellbeing and the three areas for attending the problems that the system of health has. And my commitment is, is that we will soon have, very soon, a system of health that is first rate. And that's why I am making the runs through to the hospital. because it's worse the system of health than the health than the education area but even if that's incredible and it would take me a lot of time to explain this but it's very the whole world went to to debate regarding the how bad the education was, but because it was an imposition from the outside so far, um, like the so-called um, reform, they would blame the teachers. You remember how foundation conservatives used to have a, a uh, spectacular uh, they would uh, how many days so they had like like a uh, thing that would say how many days uh, they had been without classes it was a periodical one time said in eight columns uh, I'm not going to say that name anymore but that a teacher used to earn, earn 600,000 a month they they put teachers in jail, accusing them of money laundering. They fabricated crimes and charges. Such a dishonor that was tremendous that we should be ashamed of, or they should be ashamed of. But like since the whole world was paying attention to that and even 
there used to be a business there because the government used to have campaigns of publicity to impose uh, educational reform. How did they say it? What doesn't sound logical sounds metallic. So it sounded metallic. That which was not logic was metallic. And more so, they would uh, um, perpetuate um, um, discussion on that. But the health system was abandoned and ignored tremendously uh, regarding attention. I always put the uh, example that they need a teacher, that they should not have a need. There should not be absenteeism. There should not be weeks from uh, Tuesday to Thursday. It should be a complete week. The teachers should act with responsibility, and most people do. The majority act with a lot of responsibility. The teachers, my respect is for them. But in the case that, let's say, there's a few that are irresponsible, and they just don't show up to work to give classes. So someone could substitute them, say, or the kids will go home, or they'll go home. And there they have their parents or relatives, grandparents. And there, that's how far it gets. But imagine someone comes with a heart attack or stroke to a, to a hospital in a rural area. And they don't have the medicines, the basic medication in order to to help him to get to the clinic, give him the time, like the anticoagulants, I'm pretty sure. It's like two to three hours away, so they die. So that is a dire consequence for not having the medications. So that is very serious, very grave. But they weren't even paying attention to that, only to the education baloney. So let's say there's a radiologist that when he's doing well, he gets one a turn in one hospital. In other words, the shift. But So you can't get sick during the evening or on weekends. So who, who would dare to defend this so-called popular security? The only one that, as uh, my speculation, is that they, they ha don't have the sufficient information because in general, with all my respect, they don't come out of their offices from their cubicles, these investigators, these academics. They don't even go out to the, to the sites. They don't even know the reality. And you can't transform a reality that you don't know, you're not aware of. So they give all these opinions. They, they know know-it-alls. But they're in the clouds. They debating. They or they're levitating. They don't have their feet on the ground. They don't know. Like in the train Maya. That's just a lack of information. They already have the railway there. And they don't want it. <laughs> so what is the damage? If the train if the rail's already been there for seventy years. How's that going to impact the environment? 
So it, it results that it's going to be a train, that it's going to be from Palenque ah, to San Cristobal. Yes, of course, then that would be different. Because like, say this, like there's, there's a, uh, a road because from San Cristobal in Palenque, because they, uh, we can't um, uh, be waiting because we need it. The, the, the road is in very bad condition from Pelinque to San Cristobal. It's the same road. We're going to amplify it. But I don't think that should be affecting anybody. But we have to take that decision because there's a lot of accidents in that road. Lots of problems. And what's more, one of the states, one of the most beautiful states in Mexico and in the world. There is, um, there's 32 um, beautiful areas, all of Mexico. It's a beautiful uh, paradise, Eden. Our whole country is like that. We'll see each other tomorrow. All right, goodbye.